However, in the next second, Theo loosened his grip again. Anya was already very tired after her long day, so he would let her have a good rest. Anyway, he was already staying here. The days with Anya would still be very long. He had plenty of opportunities to spend time with her. Theo took a deep breath as he looked at the bedroom door before he turned around and left. Anya held her breath in the bedroom. When she heard that Theo did not knock again, she immediately let out a sigh of relief. What a pity. Timothy placed his hand on her body, but felt only a trace of pity. Timothy. Anya reprimanded him, warning him not to go too far. If Theo pushed open the door and entered, she would be so embarrassed. Timothy lowered his head and kissed her lips. Why? Why do you say my name so strongly? Could it be that you can't wait? He asked slowly. Timothy, that's not what I meant. Before she finished speaking, she was immediately interrupted by his next action. She unconsciously closed her eyes and reached out to pull him closer. The night passed just like that. Summer was getting closer. The garden in front of the villa was filled with all kinds of lush vegetation. The fragrance of its flowers circled around and seeped into every corner of the villa. Inside, Timothy placed the breakfast he had just made on the table and then pushed open the door to Anya's bedroom. She was still sleeping soundly. He thought about what he had said to her the day before, that he wanted her not to be able to get out of bed. Anya, are you awake? Anton has already left for school. You should probably get up. He touched her face gently. His voice was gentle, unlike the one he used daily in the business world. Shh, she muttered and rolled over. Last night, Timothy had not been able to sleep until very late into the night. She was exhausted. She did not know where he got so much energy from. I am going to work now. I have prepared breakfast for you, he said as he pulled the curtains of the bedroom open. Let me see you downstairs for your breakfast. Then you can go back to bed for a nap if you like. Is that okay? The sunlight from outside the window instantly shone into the bedroom and onto her face. She reached out to block the sunlight and helplessly opened her eyes. Timothy, I just want to sleep. Anya, how much care did I put into making you breakfast? He stretched out his hands and walked to the bedside to help her up. He kissed her on the forehead and said, So I really hope you can enjoy it. All right, all right. She pursed her lips and smiled. An important man like Timothy had personally made breakfast for her. She wanted to show him respect for his thoughtful behavior. He smiled slightly and swooped her up into his arms and then walked out of the bedroom. However, in the next second, they were both stunned at the sight in front of them. Theo, who had already woken up, sat at the table and had just drank the last sip of the juice in the cup. When he saw Timothy holding Anya and standing where he was, he put down the sandwich in his hand that was half eaten. Brother, Anya, you... He opened his mouth and looked at Timothy and Anya, who were holding on to each other. He asked, You two live together? No. She quickly shook her head and struggled to jump out of Timothy's arms. She did not know why, but she felt that Theo was still the child he had been four years ago and it was not good for her and Timothy to behave like this in front of him. Timothy did not say anything. He just watched his brother walk over. Do you know what you ate? He looked at him expressionlessly. A sandwich. He looked confused. But it did not taste good. Brother, it's time for you to find a new chef. Anya could not help but laugh out loud and immediately clapped her hands over her mouth. Theo not only ate the breakfast that Timothy had made, but also complained about it. Timothy must be furious right about now. Anya, what are you laughing about? Theo asked as he looked at his older brother. Theo asked as he looked at his older brother, whose face had darkened in outrage, and then looked back at Anya, who was laughing with amusement. 
His tone conveyed his total confusion. Timothy made the sandwich you just ate. She had calmed herself before she explained to Theo. Well, I did not make it for you. Timothy looked at Theo and added coldly. This is awkward. Theo scratched his head and looked like he did not know what to do. He thought for a moment before standing up. He looked at Timothy and proposed, How about this? I will make another breakfast for Anya. No need. Theo, you know how to cook breakfast? Anya interrupted Timothy's response and stepped in front of Theo, looking very surprised. Of course I do, he nodded. Aside from going to school, my mom forced me to do an internship at the company. The rest of my time is used to studying and cooking. What would you like to eat? I'm happy to cook for you. Theo stood up and walked over to Anya, leaving Timothy excluded. Really? You can cook anything, I suggest? She looked at him in surprise. To be honest, every time Timothy prepared breakfast for her, it was a simple breakfast sandwich and fruit juice. She was beginning to feel a little tired of it. Of course, I wouldn't lie. Theo nodded like he was presenting a treasure. All right, I want to eat. I'm going to work. Just as Anya and Theo were delving into a conversation, Timothy turned and walked towards the door. There was pent-up anger in his tone. Hey, Timothy. Anya only just realized that he was angry and quickly chased after him. Theo stood where he was and looked at his angry back with a smile on his face. When she chased him to the door of the main hall, she reached out and pulled on his sleeve. She looked up at him and asked, Timothy, are you angry? He looked down at her. After a long time, he asked seriously, Anya, is the sandwich I made really that hard to eat? Huh? Anya could not react. She thought he was upset because she and Theo had gotten caught up in the conversation. She did not expect him to be upset that the sandwich he made might not be her favorite breakfast. She looked at him blankly and nodded. Timothy's face became even angrier. He looked down at her. The determination in his eyes almost scared her. The food I cook next time will knock your socks off. Uh, okay. Have a good day at work. She made a gesture of encouragement to him. You stay at home and be good. I will come back right after I get done today. He gently reached out and touched her hair. Then I can learn to make delicious food for you. Okay, she nodded happily and watched him leave for work. The weather was perfect today. As the villa was far away from the city center, the air was also very fresh. She took a deep breath, turned around, and walked into the villa in a good mood. She had just returned to the table when she smelled a delightful fragrance. She sniffed and looked around as she walked into the kitchen. She saw Theo wearing an apron and a casual cotton long sleeve shirt. Although she thought he still looked a little thin, she also noted that he looked sunny and healthy. At this moment, Theo turned his head and blinked at Anya. Anya, wait a moment. Breakfast will be ready soon. Oh, don't bother. Anya waved her hand. I will just do it myself. It's okay. I've got this. He turned around and put his hand on her shoulder. He used his hand to guide her over to the sofa in the living room and have her sit. Stay here and behave. Breakfast will be ready soon. I guarantee you will like it. But Theo did not wait for her to finish speaking. He turned around and walked into the kitchen. She sighed and felt a little embarrassed to have him making breakfast for her. But when she smelled the aroma coming from the kitchen, she began to look forward to her meal. In less than a half an hour, Theo brought out a few dishes from the kitchen. He had made toasted sourdough with perfectly poached eggs and hollandaise, French toast with maple syrup, ham steaks, and fluffy omelets with cheese and spinach. Wow! She said as she looked over at him, her jaw dropping. Theo, it's just breakfast. Why did you make such an over-the-top scrumptious meal? 
When I lived with you in the villa before going off to school, I knew you enjoyed eating creative breakfasts. So, in the last four years, I have been learning to cook according to your taste. He looked into her eyes, and his warm smile made her heart flutter. She blinked her eyes and immediately realized that she had almost fallen into his endearing smile. Anya coughed lightly and smiled at him. Then let's eat. Did you forget? I have already eaten. He rubbed her hair. You can eat this. I will eat some leftovers. I I don't have a big appetite in the morning. The more she spoke, the lower her voice became. She had begun to feel a little guilty. How could I eat so much? All right, eat whatever makes you happy. Theo picked up a fork and handed it to her. Okay, she nodded. She looked at the delicious breakfast spread before her and forgot to be polite. She took the fork and started to feast. Oh, right. Theo looked at her and said, Anya, when you finish breakfast, will you come with me to the store? You want to go shopping? She forked a piece of French toast and put it into her mouth. She asked curiously, Why do you need to go to the store? Because I stayed here yesterday, but I didn't have any daily necessities and I don't have any clothes. Theo lowered his head. My brother probably hates me because of my mother. So he wouldn't think to prepare these for me. Anya. He looked at her full of hope. His expression was solemn, as if he was asking her to do something big. Anya, can you come with me? Um, are you not interested? His tone instantly became very downcast. Goodness gracious, all right, all right. She hurriedly nodded. I'll go with you. It's just a trip to the store. Promise? Theo happily stood up. I'm just going to the store. Of course I agree. Theo, sit down. She laughed dryly and quickly had him sit down. This child must have had a hard time. There was someone willing to go with him. He was so happy when someone agreed to go to the store with him. They needed to treat him better in the future. Okay. Theo returned to his seat. On his angular face, the feelings of his teenage self had yet to fade from his eyes. After she finished eating, Theo impatiently pulled her out of the villa. Originally, the bodyguards in charge of protecting her did not want her to go out. However, Theo said that they only wanted to walk around at the store in a nice area of town. Furthermore, he was also there to protect her. So, after hesitating for a moment, the bodyguard let him take her and leave. However, when Theo drove the car out of the villa, he did not go in the direction he told them he would. Theo, I don't think we are headed in the right direction. Anya turned her head and looked at the scenery around her before she asked, Are we going to the store? Theo casually replied, You were stuck in the villa all day. You must be bored to death. I thought I'd take you out to do something fun since we had the opportunity. Ah, uh, that's good too. She paused for a second and smiled. Theo knew her well. Ever since she had been injured... She had indeed not had the chance to get out and do anything enjoyable. It was quite nice to come out and relax today. He turned his head and looked at her instantly happy face. The corners of his mouth could not help but turn up in a warm smile. After the two of them arrived at a large store in the middle of the city, they started to pick out some of the things he needed. The main point was to find some daily necessities for Theo. Although the servants in the villa had prepared a few things for him, he still liked to make decisions for himself. As she mused over this, he pushed a shopping cart in front of her and said mysteriously, Come, Anya, do you want to play? With this? She pointed at the shopping cart in front of him. She was a little hesitant, but he was more than eager to give his idea a try. His face quirked into a grin as he imagined pushing her around in the cart. If she would agree to this game, it would definitely be very interesting. If the person pushing her was Timothy, that would be a silly fun time. Anya thought with a smile. 
Anya, quickly, jump in. Theo stood by and encouraged her. Uh, Anya pursed her lips. This is not a good idea. Why not? Anya, why are you so self-restrained? Theo pushed the cart forward a little and encouraged her. You want me to get in it? She asked him again. He saw that she wanted to give it a try, but she looked embarrassed. So he walked over to her. Before she could react, he picked her up and sat her in the shopping cart. Theo! She was trapped in the shopping cart. Although she was very amused, she was also a little embarrassed. Well, let's go! After he said that, he began to push the shopping cart. Oh, slow down! She squealed both afraid and happy at the same time. She tightly grabbed the sides of the shopping cart as the wind whistled by her ears. All the goods on the shelf turned into a blur as they quickly flashed past. Just like that, the two of them kept wheeling around in the area where there were very few people in the store. After her initial fear, Anya became more at ease and happy. She loosened her tightly clenched hands and spread her arms as if she was going to fly. Her sincere smile reflected in Theo's eyes, making him happy as well. Anya, hold on. It's time to turn. Theo pushed the shopping cart and slowed down as he turned the cart. Ah! A woman screamed. It turned out that just as he turned the cart around, a figure suddenly appeared in front of them. Anya and Theo were both shocked. Luckily, he was able to react in time and stop the shopping cart instantly. Anya was shocked. When she recovered her senses, she found that the person standing in front of her was Jen. She saw her standing there wearing a lovely white dress. She looked pure and warm, making it so she seemed so approachable. Anya! Jen? The two of them called out each other's name at the same time. Anya, why are you here? She ran over to the shopping cart and looked at the dazed woman and asked, I thought sitting in a shopping cart was for children. Ah, uh, Anya embarrassingly laughed and hurriedly attempted to get out of the shopping cart, but she could not seem to get out, no matter how hard she struggled. Anya, here, let me help you. Theo behaved as if he had not seen Jen as of yet. He reached out his hand and wanted to help her out. No need. She hurriedly waved her hand at him, insisting that she could do it on her own. Then let me help you. Jen, who was still standing there, hurriedly supported Anya's arm. She said thank you and finally got out of the shopping cart with her help. Since her colleague had seen her crazy scene, she felt somewhat embarrassed. After getting out of the cart, she smiled at her and politely said, Jen, what a coincidence. It sure is. Jen acted as if she did not see anything and stepped forward to place her hand on Anya's arm and asked, Are you also here to shop? Yes, yes. She nodded her head and looked at Theo before she said to Jen, I came here with my younger brother. Your brother? She repeated Anya's words and looked at Theo seriously. Suddenly, she opened her mouth in surprise and pointed at Theo, then said, Ah, oh, are you Theo? He looked at her with a complex expression and nodded to Jen. Yes, my name is Theo. Theo, it really is you. She responded exuberantly before she looked at him and said, Theo, do you remember me? I am Jen. We were classmates in high school. Yes, I thought I recognized you. His voice was cold and his eyes flashed with a trace of light. Yes, Jen. What a coincidence, Anya said in disbelief. Yes, who knew? Jen looked very excited. She looked at Anya and explained, When I was in high school, I was good friends with Theo. It was just that later on, he went abroad. Very soon after that, I also went abroad. Although both of us were in Europe, you know, Europe is very big. We have not run into each other since then. I certainly didn't expect to run into you in Harburton today. After she finished speaking, she looked at him with a bright smile. It has now been so many years since I last saw you. 
I almost didn't recognize you just now. Fate is so crazy. Anya smiled in a gossipy manner. She looked at Jen, then looked at Theo. They were about the same age. It seemed that they could create some sparks. Fate really can be quite fun, can't it? Anya, I suddenly remembered that four years ago, you made me cookies that were delicious. Why don't you go over there and pick up some cookie cutters so we can make some? He nodded his head in their direction and said, Yep, that's right. After all, it's been a long time since I last saw you. I understand. Anya winked at him and said, When you run into an old friend, you have to say some things in private. Anya felt that she was pretty sure she knew what was going on. Theo had been in such a hurry to send her away. He must want to reminisce with Jen, whom he had not seen for a long time. He even pretended to want to eat cookies. She didn't think this child would be so shy. Anya, you don't understand. Theo, who was originally a little angry because of Jen's sudden appearance, but when he saw Anya's expression, he felt a little helpless. Okay, fine, I don't understand. Only you guys understand. She looked at him with a don't-be-shy expression and said, Then I'll go and find the cookie cutters now. You two have a nice chat. After she said that, she left like a gust of wind. Seeing Anya's figure disappear, he turned to look at Jen. His long legs approached Jen and he said, Jen, what exactly do you want? Jen smiled and said, Theo, what can I do? I heard from Leonard that you have from Leonard that you have already moved into Timothy's villa. I'm a little worried. So I found you so I could take a look. Jen said it casually, appearing calm on the surface, but her heart was filled with bitterness. There was an overwhelming jealousy. When she was in high school, she liked this boy who kept people at an arm's distance. He was the same as her. Although he was polite and warm to others on the surface, his heart was the same as hers. So, she desired to get close to this like-minded boy. However, he had gone and fallen in love with Anya, who was three years older than him. Later, Theo left to study abroad in Europe. Jen had also studied in Europe. She had originally thought that his crush would end when he spent years away from Anya. However, lately, there had been things that shocked Jen one after another and these things always revolved around one person, Anya. After Theo got into a university in Europe, he had begun an internship at the company his mother and father had established in Europe. Although it was not as big as the Godot group, his status was still very high. Theo, who had entered the company, worked ten times harder than any ordinary person. He was so young, but he had taken the position of CEO of the company when he graduated from college. During that time, he had befriended Leonard and sent Sue to the Godot group as an assistant. Jen originally thought that he had done all of this to take back the Godot group in Harburton, but she did not expect that Theo's ultimate goal had been to get Anya. After Theo returned to Harburton, he walked away from their plan and rescued Anya from Heath. He had wronged himself by acting as a poor university student. He had pretended to be thick-skinned and insisted on living in Timothy's villa. Now, he finally got what he wanted and was living with Anya. However, she could not tolerate it anymore. She had done so much for him. She could not let all of her hard work go to waste. Look at me. Theo raised his chin slightly. His powerful, calm aura was not like that of the sunny youth in front of Anya. I don't need that. Just do your own thing. Theo, are you angry? She approached him and said softly, I pretended to meet you guys because I care about you. I really had no other purpose. Moreover, look at Anya's expression just now. She didn't suspect a thing. He lowered his eyes and looked at her smiling face that reminded him of a flower. He coldly warned, Jen, this is the last time. I know. Jen had a good temper and smiled. She reached out to grab his hand and said, I care about you. Don't be angry. Theo suddenly pulled his hand away. All right, you have said what you needed to say. Let's go.
There is one thing I haven't told you. Jen lowered her head in the grievance. Theo impatiently pursed his lips. He turned his head and looked into the distance. He sighed and said, Okay, but make it quick. Ah, okay. Jen deliberated and said, You need to start telling people that Melissa's death is in Leo's hands. He was with her that night, and no one knows anything else. You think Heath would have appeared by now. Almost everyone knew he cared a lot about Melissa, and if we cannot pin it on him, we need a plan B. I was a little anxious, so I thought, should we take some other measures? No need. Theo shook his head. Heath is much smarter than Melissa, and he has military-level camouflage abilities. If we do too much, it will cause his suspicion. Heath has not come out yet, but that does not mean he isn't thinking of a way to solve this problem. We need to be patient. He looked at Jen and said, Besides, I've been living with Timothy recently. He can't be underestimated. We have to be more careful when doing things from now on. During this period of time, you and Leo cannot come looking for me. Take this time to rest, and I will contact you when the time comes. I don't want to take time off. I like this job, and we have to finish it. She took a step forward to him. She stretched out her hand and placed it on Theo's shoulder. He immediately took a step back, stared at her, and said, Anya is still not far away. Don't ruin things now. Jen's hand suddenly froze, and a trace of resentment flashed in her eyes. Immediately, she started to move away and looked at the ground. The anger welled up in her, and she yelled, All right, all right, whatever you say. Then I'll leave now. If anything comes up, can I at least reach you on your phone? Fine. Theo nodded his head. Anya has been there for a long time. You should leave as soon as possible. Bye. Jen smiled professionally and watched him turn around and leave. Jen looked at Theo's tall and thin back as he walked away. Her bitter smile remained on her face until Theo turned a corner and disappeared. She then nodded her head in a daze and disappeared. When he left, Theo made a decision to go spy on Anya. He saw that she was focused on trying to find the perfect cookie cutter. Some of her long bangs slid down and slightly blocked her side profile. She reached out her hand and inadvertently supported the fallen bangs to the back of her ear, revealing her bright peach blossom eyes and straight nose. Theo instantly felt that his chest was lightly hit by something soft. There was a fluttering feeling, and he was unsure why he was getting excited. Unconsciously, Theo started to move and ended up by Anya's side. Anya. Theo, what are you doing here? She put down the cookie cutters and turned to look at him. Hey, where's Jen? Why didn't she come with you? Jen had something to do, so she went back. Theo replied faintly, Oh, I see. When we meet again, I'll have to talk to her about you. Anya's eyes lit up with gossip again. I see that your relationship with Jen is a little special. So, some girl-to-girl talk about it might be nice for her. When did you start gossiping? Theo looked helplessly at Anya. Jen and I are really just classmates. Okay, okay, okay. If you say you are classmates then you are really just classmates. She shook her head and teased. It's just that if you lose somebody because you don't have time to confess, then the loss outweighs the gain. She remembered that Leslie Lynch also liked Jen. If Theo did not work hard, what she said was almost true. When he heard the word late, he was stunned. He looked at her smiling face and nodded. Indeed, I did not have time to confess to someone. Now, he paused, it's really not worth it. If he had been braver and stronger four years ago, would he have confessed to Anya and left with her? If that were the case, he would not have to put in so much effort and bear the weight of his mistakes years later. Well, I'm telling you now. Anya patted Theo's shoulder and advised. So when you see this old friend that you like, whoever she is, shout it to the rooftops. I support you. You support me. Theo raised his eyebrows as if he thought of a good idea. Of course I support you. Do your best. She nodded very seriously. 
Matthew was like a younger sibling to her, and she thought Jen was a wonderful person. She would do everything in her power to get them together. Both of them were the kind of people who could warm the hearts of people. They would be very happy together. Okay. Theo suddenly grabbed her hand. You promise to keep your word? Why are you asking so seriously? She struggled to pull her hand back and said seriously, I, Anya, will keep my word. Okay. From tomorrow onwards, can you help me practice? Practice? Practice what? She was confused. What was he talking about? Practicing confessions. His eyes flashed with the charming light. If you want to chase a girl, you can't just run into her, right? That's why I want to practice in advance. You can help me with that. You think that will work? She asked as her eyes widened. Why not? Theo shrugged. Are you afraid that you won't be able to resist my charming while practicing? You are supposed to be a child, not a gross, creepy old man. Anya shook her head. Theo, don't worry. Even if you don't have good flirting skills, since I promised you, I will definitely help you. Very good. Theo nodded his head. So we will start tomorrow? Depends on your own arrangements, but tomorrow is fine for me, she said. Okay, we will get started then. He looked at her glowing eyes and made his decision. By the way, you said you want to buy a cookie cutter for the baking? I have already chosen it. After she finished speaking, she pointed to the one on the shelf and asked, What do you think of this set? Very good. Theo nodded and picked up the cookie cutter Anya pointed at and placed it in the shopping cart. Otherwise, I would have bought this simple set. Okay, Anya smiled and said, This one is quite big. It is just enough for Anton and Timothy. Tonight I will let them have a good taste of my craftsmanship. Theo was brought back to reality when he heard her say his brother's name. Theo's bright face unconsciously darkened. He picked up the cookie cutter from the shopping cart and put it back in its original position. Hey, why did you put it back? She asked and furrowed her brows in confusion. The color is too ugly. After Theo said that, he pushed the shopping cart and left. How is it ugly? She picked up the cutter and watched him walk away. She chased after him and said, Besides, this kind of metal luster mold is the most commonly used. I want this one. I said it is ugly, Theo said coldly as he pushed the shopping cart forward. He had no intention of stopping to wait for Anya. Even if it is ugly, it is just what I need. After she said that, she put the cookie cutter in the shopping cart angrily. Theo looked at the mold and sighed, but he did not stop her. In these years, he had already developed a habit of saying whatever he wanted. Very few people could argue with him without hesitation, like Anya just had. He tried not to grin, but he could not hold it in. He liked this side of Anya. After they bought the things they needed, they returned to the villa and started to make the cookies. Anya prepared butter, sugar, and egg juice, while Theo measured out the cranberry juice, gluten flour, and matcha powder. After Anya melted the butter in the hot water, she added the flour and sugar. Theo poured in the eggs, and after Anya struggled to stir them evenly, she added the cranberry juice into the mix. Now we need to add in the powder. Theo stretched out his index finger and dipped it into the green matcha powder. He then dabbed it on the tip of Anya's nose. He laughed and said, Come on, add it in. Theo, if you want to make cookies, then you do it. You can't mess with me. She picked up some powder on her fingers and was ready to get him back. Theo was stunned. What was she doing? He just put a little on her nose, and she had much more in her hand. What are you doing? He asked. She lunged forward, but didn't expect Theo to retreat so quickly, and she missed. Anya was not willing to give up. How could she be bullied by her little brother? She put down the original ingredients of the prepared cookies and chased after Theo. Stop right there. I am your big sister. You are not my sister. He retreated far away. With a smile on his face, he said, You are so beautiful. You are suitable to be my girlfriend. Theo! 
she could not catch up to him. After hearing his words, she became even angrier. You're becoming more and more disrespectful, aren't you? Just wait. When she finished shouting, she sped up and chased after him. Unfortunately, Theo's reaction was too fast. She could not catch him. After running a few laps, Anya stood on the spot and panted tiredly. All right, Theo. You have grown up, right? Then stop acting like a child. All right, all right, all right. Don't be angry. He saw her hands on her waist and knew that she was done with his tricks. He walked to Anya's side and picked up her hand, which was stained with the powder. He raised it in front of his face and said, Come on, let's get you cleaned up. She laughed in victory. At least I know what's good for you. Theo, just you wait. I... He nodded his head. That's right, that's right. If you want to fight, then you have to be careful. If you don't want to fight, then you still have to be careful. A cold voice came from the kitchen door, and Anya and Theo turned around at the same time and saw Timothy. They did not know when he had gotten back. He crossed his arms over his chest and leaned against the door frame of the kitchen. His eagle eyes stared at them as they laughed and joked. If Anya had looked carefully, she would have noticed the dangerous glint in his eyes. When Theo saw Timothy, he was stunned. Then, with a faint smile on his face, he grabbed Anya's hand even tighter. Timothy, you're back! Anya quickly pulled her hand back from Theo's grip. She looked at Theo, who was calm, and smiled awkwardly at Timothy. Um, Thea and I are just making cookies for you and Anton. Oh? Timothy pretended to be interested, but his eyes were still filled with danger. He stood up from leaning on the frame and approached Anya and asked, Are you ready? No, not yet. She could not help but take a step back. She did not know why. She was clearly just making cookies with Theo, but Timothy's expression made her feel like he did not trust her. Oh, okay. Timothy nodded, turned around, and walked out of the kitchen. His deep voice came from afar. I will wait for dinner. Anya stood where she was and looked at Timothy's back. She felt that she needed to explain. Hey, Timothy, wait a minute. I... Anya. Theo grabbed her arm and said, We haven't finished making our cookies. We need to finish. Where are you going? Making your head a mess? Finish it yourself. Anya used her hand, which was covered with the powder, and angrily knocked Theo's head with her powdery hand. She turned around and ran out of the kitchen. Theo looked at Anya's back and slightly lowered his eyes. Timothy! Anya chased after him into the study. Just as she called out his name, he entered the study and closed the door. She quietly walked to the door of the study and knocked on the door. Timothy, can I come in? Yes. His deep voice came from under the door. She pursed her lips and pushed the door open. She saw Timothy sitting at his desk, wearing a black suit on the hanger. He was only wearing a white shirt, and the buttons on his chest were undone. She could vaguely see his muscular chest. Are the cookies ready? He said as he looked at the documents in front of him. He did not lift his head to look up at her. Uh, there's no hurry with the cookies, she said timidly as she approached the desk. She took a big gulp and moved closer to Timothy while asking, Timothy, why did you get off work so early today? Timothy shook his head and looked at the pile of documents on the desk. He said, I wanted to spend more time with you, so I finished all the important documents in the company as soon as possible. I brought these to the villa to review. I see. She was touched. It seems like you don't need me to get off work early. In the future, I will work according to the original work pattern. He responded. Timothy poured a bucket of cold water on Anya as soon as she felt touched. No, wait. She hurriedly grabbed his sleeve and looked at him and said, I hope you can come home early and accompany me more. Are you sure that's what you want? Or do you just want Theo to do it? He griped and finally looked up at her. Of course it's you. 
She looked at him with an expression of absolute loyalty. Heaven and earth could see it. Theo is just a child. I fight with him more than anything. I just enjoy joking around with him. That's it. Really? He was surprised as he grabbed her wrist and pulled her onto his lap. I also like to fight with you. Should I put you in the child category with Theo? She asked as she looked at him in disbelief. Of course. The quarrels between you and me are not like the ones between you and Theo. Timothy pressed his lips against Anya's to end the fight. Anya quickly put her hand on Timothy's chest and asked in embarrassment, Timothy, this is the study room. Are you sure you want to do this? Do you still need to tell me where to fight? He reached out his hand and smiled. He moved his hand down and untied the zipper of the back of Anya's skirt. Theo stood downstairs, holding the mixed cookies in his hand. He looked in the direction of the study upstairs, and his face darkened bit by bit. The next day, just as Timothy left for work at the company, Theo pulled Anya into the garden just outside the villa. Theo, what are you doing? She struggled to get out of his grip. She had been having a lot of fun with Theo yesterday and had already made Timothy unhappy. Today, she had to pay attention to the impact. She didn't want him to get angry again. Last night, Timothy tortured her until midnight because of this matter. She could not stand this kind of punishment anymore, so she had to stay focused. However, Theo didn't answer her. He was just staring at her body. Anya was beginning to feel a little strange. She followed his gaze and was shocked. Theo was looking at her neck. She jumped a bit. She remembered that there were marks left by Timothy on her neck last night, and they were not just little love bites this time. Oh, Anya combed her collar in embarrassment. Theo had just graduated from college. She did not hear him mention that he had a girlfriend. So he probably did not know what the mark on her neck was. Uh, what did you say just now? Anya began too quickly. Oh, I didn't say anything just now. It was you who said it. He finally adverted his gaze and made eye contact with Anya. She was wearing an ordinary cotton dress and her hair was casually tied up. Even though the marks on her neck were very glaring, she still looked like a beautiful painting that Timothy would frame and put on the wall. He was beginning to get lost in her smile. Her eyes were like diamonds that sparkled even in the darkest nights. Her cheeks were as pink as peach blossoms. He wondered when Anya would really belong to him. His eyes flashed, and he unconsciously moved closer to her. Theo, what's wrong? She hurriedly took a few steps back. She was flustered. Theo was a child, and she was praying he would not ask her about the marks on her neck. Thinking of this, Anya's heart skipped a beat. It was over. If he asked, how would she answer? Anya? His eyes gradually calmed down from the complicated look just now. Huh? Anya was still thinking hard about how to explain the kiss mark on her neck. Let's practice. Practice? Anya frowned and did not understand. Practicing? What practice? Anya, you clearly promised yesterday that you would be my practice flirting so I can chase girls. At this moment, Theo had already recovered to a sunny youth. He placed his hand on Anya's shoulder and asked, Anya, you don't want to go back on your word, right? Of course not. She laughed as she shook her head. She almost forgot about this matter. Then let's start. He coughed lightly and began to brew his emotions. Hey, wait a minute. She gestured him to stop. You haven't told me about the exact situation between you and Jen yet. Does she have a good impression of you or not? I couldn't imagine she would only treat you as a friend that way, according to the situation. Jen is not the person I like. Theo felt a little helpless. Who else could it be if it's not Jen? She was even more curious. Yesterday, she clearly thought the person Theo liked was Jen. Maybe it was a person from college. The person I like is... He looked at her and was speechless. In the end, he still did not say it out loud. 
Forget it. Whoever you say is who it is. You can pretend to be Jen. What do you mean by that? She curled her lips. With your attitude, how can you chase any girls? That depends on how you cooperate with me. If the practice method is right, I will definitely catch you up. He raised his eyebrows and smiled at Anya. His manner seemed to be somewhat similar to Timothy's. Anya was stunned for a second when she saw it. Hmm? Why aren't you saying anything? He said as he immediately noticed Anya's absent-minded look. Nothing. Nothing. She quickly waved her hand in embarrassment. She was lost in her thoughts of how Theo and Timothy looked more alike than she ever noticed. Well, I'm going to start. After he said that, she could see him smiling with his eyes. Okay, let's start. She nodded. She took over Jen's role. Although Theo denied that the person he liked was Jen, she assumed that he was shy because of his young age. Come, Anya, stand still. He held her shoulders, and his eyes gradually became filled with affection. It starts now? She blinked her eyes. His acting skills were really amazing. He got right into character, and it was so believable. This affectionate gaze was the same as the real one. Yeah, it's starting. Theo nodded. Anya, I'm currently brewing my emotions. Can you stop goofing around? Okay, okay, I will cooperate. Anya coughed lightly and pretended to be shy as she looked at Theo. Anya. Hey, that's not right. Just as he opened his mouth to begin, he was taken aback by Anya. Theo, you should treat me as the person you like, not me. So you can't call me by my own name. When the time comes for me to confess, just pretend I had changed your name. He rubbed his forehead with a headache. Anya, can you not interrupt? Okay, I'm sorry. She quickly nodded her head in agreement and promised, I will definitely not interrupt you again. Only then did Theo nod his head in satisfaction. He looked seriously into her eyes and said, Anya, actually, the first time I saw you, I did not have any special feelings. As time went on and we got to know each other more and more, I didn't know when, but I fell in love with you. Anya looked at his solemn and gentle expression and could not help but feel speechless in her heart. She took a deep sigh. Theo was a young soul who really had deep feelings for Jen. Looking at his gaze, it did not look like an act at all. If Jen saw it, she would definitely fall in love with him forever. Anya, do you know? I am in a place that you cannot see. I have done a lot of things for you. Theo took a step forward toward her. Anya, I have to say these things. I am not saying this to make you feel grateful or touched. I just want to say... As long as you are happy and need me to do anything for you, I'm willing. Anya stared at Theo's warm smile and dark eyes. She sighed, and her mind went blank. He was really good at flirting with girls. As a mother of a five-year-old child, she almost fell into it. Hey, wait, what was Theo doing? Anya looked at Theo, who was getting closer and closer to her, and her pupils unconsciously widened. She could not help but lean backward, but was stopped by Theo. Don't move. Theo held Anya's arm with one hand and lifted her chin with the other, then slowly approached her lips. Uh, no! Anya froze for a second or two before she pushed Theo away. She took a few steps back and was quite a distance away from Theo. The blooming jasmine flowers behind her swayed in the breeze. The strong scent spread to every corner. Anya's dress was slightly flipped. She pointed at Theo and asked, You, you, you! What do you want from me? Theo, who was pushed away, took a few steps back and stood still. She was much stronger than he would have guessed. He laughed lightly. He imitated her shocked tone and said, I, 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 I am practicing. Yes, but just now. He smiled and said, Oh, you said I was practicing just now. Only then did he pretend to have thought of something. 
He looked at her and said, Do you think I will really be able to kiss someone without practicing moving in? You! Anya bit her lips. She really thought Theo would kiss her just now. She was relieved when she learned that she had assumed incorrectly. Anya silently sighed. That was true. She was Theo's older sister. She was three years older than him. Besides, Jen was the one he liked. Why should he be so sentimental? And she had such a big reaction. Theo looked at her embarrassed expression and took a few steps forward. He approached Anya again. What should we do? I was in such a good mood just now. I was interrupted by you. Now I can only do it again. Um... Anya nodded awkwardly. She suddenly realized that his practicing skills were very weird. However, she had to be a good person until the end. She had to bear with it. Okay. He smiled in satisfaction before he looked at Anya and said some mushy words to her. If she did not rely on her strong willpower, she would have fainted. Just as she was lost in her thoughts, Theo lifted her chin as soon as he finished speaking. That smiling face also slowly approached Anya. She widened her eyes and looked at Theo. She endured the cold and did not push him away. After all, she had already thought too highly of herself just now. This time, she definitely could not lose face again. At this moment, the distance between their eyes were only one centimeter. In the next second, he simply kissed Anya's forehead. A soft touch came from her forehead and she froze. She was stunned for a while before she pushed him away and shouted, Theo, what are you doing? I just kissed your forehead and not your lips. I have already restrained myself. He shrugged. Yeah, but you made it seem like you were not going to kiss me at all. She rubbed her forehead with all of her might and thought about the fact that the person she treated as her brother kissed her. This feeling was really too strange. Why was he acting this way? When did I say that I wouldn't kiss you? Theo took a step forward and asked. Well, you didn't say it, but I thought we had a clear unspoken agreement. Plus, you said that you just needed to practice moving in for the kiss, not the actual thing. Is this how you're going to treat the girl you have a crush on when the time comes? She continued to rub her forehead as she replied with a question. Oh, okay. Theo tilted his head and looked at her and said, so you think I really have a chance to use my practicing skills on her? Maybe she would react better to a kiss, too. He said with a joking shrug. You! Anya gritted her teeth. She originally thought that Theo and Timothy only had a similar appearance. She did not think that even their personalities were almost identical. They were so thick-skinned. Anya, I feel I did not express my emotions very well. He looked at her solemnly and suggested, So, let's do it again. Do it again? She bit her lips and took a few steps toward him. She pointed at his forehead and said, I will only do it again if I believe you. Theo, let me tell you, if you continue to be disrespectful, I will... Anya. Theo grabbed her hand and asked, You have only practiced once, and you were already unwilling... Can you still help me chase the girl I like? I said I'll help you chase the girl, but I didn't say I want you to kiss my forehead. She said with an unhappy scoff. What does kissing your forehead have to do with it? In some countries, everyone has to hug and kiss the cheek. He looked as if it was a matter, of course. Anya, you wouldn't be embarrassed just because I kissed your forehead, right? No. She quickly shook her head. When she heard what he said, she also felt that she was a little surprised, but she kept feeling that something was not right. Since there is nothing else, Theo took a step forward, then let's continue practicing. Anya frowned and watched him slowly approach her. She could not help but take a step back. At this moment, Anya's phone suddenly rang. Theo frowned as he watched her take out her phone from the pocket of her long-sleeve one-piece dress. It's Gary. He must have some news about Rory. She looked at her phone in surprise and immediately pressed the answer button. Gary? How is Rory? I called you because of Rory's matter. He was sitting right next to her bed and slowly grazed her cheek with his hand. 
he said to Anya on the other end of the phone. The doctor said Rory's condition is getting better and better. After the examination, Rory's brain activity has also increased. But she wants to completely wake up. We still need external help. After saying that, he picked up the dried mango at the side of the table and placed it on the tip of Rory's nose. He said, Last time, you used the dried mango to make Rory have a reaction. So I want to invite you over to try again. Can you come? Of course. Anya nodded vigorously. If it could wake Rory up, she would do anything. Gary, I will come to the hospital now. Thank you, Anya. Gary was now more heartbroken from the beginning, but he was indifferent and accepted it because he knew that Rory would wake up eventually. You're welcome, Anya smiled. After she hung up the phone, she rushed into the villa to get her bag. Anya, where are you going? Theo, who was standing at the side, was happy to see Anya, sometimes serious, sometimes happy, all inflicted because of his doings. He did not like Anya's mood to change so much because of others. I am going to the hospital. You can stay here alone for a while, right? Anya said hastily and walked out. Theo quickly chased after her and asked, Hospital? Why do you need to go to the hospital? To see my friend. She picked up her bag as she spoke. He lowered his head and thought for a while before he chased after her and said, Anya, I want to go with you too. You want to come too? She stopped and turned around. What are you going to do? Wherever you are, I want to go. He caught up with her. I can be more at ease when I am with you. It's either me or you will have to be surrounded by a group of bodyguards. Anya frowned and felt that he was right. She nodded. Okay, you can come with me. Seeing her agree, Theo immediately revealed a sunny smile. Let's go. After the two of them came to the hospital together, they knocked on the door and walked into Rory's ward. Rory's parents and Gary saw Anya coming in and immediately went up to her. Anya, you're here. Anya greeted Rory's parents and then looked at Gary. He nodded at Anya, but his eyes could not help but fall on Theo, who was standing next to Anya. Who is this gentleman? Gary found that the man standing next to Anya looked very similar to Timothy, but his aura was completely different. Timothy was calm, domineering, and heroic. The man standing in front of him was a young man. He was always smiling. However, he had only just met him. He did not know what kind of face was underneath this smile. This is Theo, Timothy's younger brother. Anya hurriedly introduced him to Gary and Rory's parents. Gary remembered that Timothy indeed had a younger brother named Theo. However, he spent most of his time with Timothy in the company and did not have any impression of this young man. Hello. Theo took a step forward and shook hands with Gary. Hello. Gary nodded at Theo and shook his hand. Theo looked at Gary with a friendly smile. He remembered hearing from his father that Gary was Timothy's best assistant. Theo smiled as he withdrew his hand. Anya walked to Rory's bedside. She reached out and touched Rory's still pale face. She turned to look at Rory's parents. I see Rory's complexion is much better than before. Rory's parents knew that Anya was humoring them, but they nodded very happily. The doctors say that her condition was indeed a little better. She has reached a critical point. She just needs to give Rory a little stimulation. Perhaps she will be able to wake up completely. That's why we called you here. Let's try together. I'll do my best to help Rory. Anya nodded. Anya, have you already thought of a way? Gary, who had just finished talking with Theo, heard Anya's words and immediately walked in front of her. Uh, I haven't thought of a good way for now. I just saw the mango jerky on the table and suddenly thought of a strange idea. I don't know if it will work. Anya lowered her head in embarrassment. Tell me. If I can wake Rory up, I will support any strange ideas. Gary looked at Anya with hope. All right, then. Anya nodded. That's right. Last time I said that someone wanted to snatch Rory's mango jerky, so she reacted. However... The person she cares about the most is Gary. 
So I plan to tell Rory this time that someone is coming to snatch you. Snatch me? Gary was startled and did not react for a moment. That's right. I remember when Rory saw your colleague Sue suddenly become beautiful. She immediately felt that she was facing a great enemy. She dragged me to see her and then asked me to think of a plan for her to prevent Sue from snatching you away. Anya explained in embarrassment. Gary was even more confused. It was that time Rory sent you lunch. She asked me to find out why Sue looked different. She thought Sue had fallen in love with you, and that's why she had changed. Rory cared about you too much. A little girl like her doesn't know anything about dating. Gary and Rory's parents were shocked. Theo could not help frowning. He did not expect Sue to be involved in this. It's fine. Gary heard Anya's words and shook his head. He did not expect Rory to care about him so much. Then can I try? Anya looked at Gary probingly. Of course. Gary nodded and made space for Anya. Anya walked to Rory's bedside and reached out to stroke her messy hair. Rory, when will you wake up? I really miss you. Just as Anya finished speaking, she saw Rory's fingers move. Rory must have heard what she said, but she had not completely opened her eyes yet. Anya excitedly took a deep breath and continued. Rory, hurry and wake up. Gary has lost a lot of weight because of you. Even Sue has come to see you. After Anya finished speaking, Rory's fingers moved violently. Anya bit her lips and knew she should continue. Sue is very good to Gary. She has always been by Gary's She has always been by Gary's side, comforting, encouraging him. Other people would be very touched after seeing it. Rory's eyelids seemed to move a little. Everyone held their breath and looked at Rory. They looked at Anya with hope. Anya bit her lips and continued. Last time I said that Sue did not become more beautiful because of Gary. Actually, I lied to you. Sue became beautiful because she was in love with Gary. Rory, wake up. She is going to steal him. Everyone saw Rory's eyelashes flutter. Doctor! Gary rushed out of the door. Rory's mother was lying in Rory's father's arms and crying loudly. Theo looked at this scene and did not know what to say. Anya immediately grabbed Rory's hand and continued to work hard. Rory, you can hear me, right? Open your eyes, Rory. You will see Gary and your parents. Rory, open your eyes. Anya excitedly encouraged Rory, but in a second, she was stunned. The doctor said that Rory's eyes were blind. If Rory woke up and she found out that she was blind, what would she do? Anya became flustered. She lowered her head and looked at Rory, who was trying her best to open her eyes. A deep sense of powerlessness surged into her heart. Anya, how is Rory? Gary rushed to her side. Rory seems to be trying to wake up. Anya looked up at the excited Gary and placed Rory's hand in Gary's hand. Rory, is Gary. Wake up, will you? I really can't hold on much longer. The doctor will be here soon. Open your eyes. Gary held Rory's hand tightly, his voice trembling. Rory opened her pale lips and her eyelashes fluttered slowly, like a butterfly that had just broken out of a cocoon. She struggled, but was very strong. She used all of her strength and slowly opened her eyes. She's awake. She's awake. Rory is awake. Everyone in the ward began to cheer. Gary kissed Rory on the cheek. The previously calm and steady face was now covered with an excited blush. Rory's parents held each other's hands and cried tears of joy. The doctors rushed forward and started to perform various tests on Rory. The entire ward became extremely lively. Everyone was so happy that they could not control themselves. Only Anya's eyes fell in Rory's empty eyes. Anya stared at Rory's face and saw that she was trying her best to blink her eyes to see everything in front of her. Anya felt that the other people who were wild with joy had all turned into the background. 
She only saw Rory helplessly staring at a certain spot in the ward, still blinking her eyes. Rory? Anya took a step forward. Now we are going to conduct a full examination of the patient. The family member should leave for a moment. The attending physician ordered, and everyone slowly calmed down. Rory's parents looked at Rory as they happily walked out of the ward. Gary kissed her forehead and let go of Rory's hand. The moment Gary let go of her hand, Anya clearly saw Rory moving her lips. She must have wanted to say something. Anya, let's go out too. Theo looked down at Anya and interrupted her thoughts. Anya looked at Rory again, then nodded and followed Theo out of the ward. Outside the ward, Gary happily paced back and forth. He was usually a calm person, so he must be so happy that he could not sit still. Anya leaned against the wall, her eyes staring intently at the ward's door. Although she was also very happy, Anya was more worried. She did not know what kind of reaction Rory would have when she found out that she did not see. What's wrong? Theo came to Anya's side and found that something was not right with her. Although she had a smile on her face, her eyes were a little worried. I... Anya looked up at Theo and hesitated. I am just worried. Anya, thank you. Rory's mother finally calmed down and quickly came in front of Anya to thank her. Anya quickly shook her head. I am just helping. Rory is very strong herself. You and Gary are the biggest motivation for Rory to wake up. Rory's mother began to cry again. Don't worry. Now that Rory has woken up, it's a joyous occasion. Don't let her see that you are crying. When Anya said this, she suddenly stopped. It was just a normal comforting sentence, but Anya felt that what she said was not very appropriate. Rory's eyes. Anya did not know what to do. The door of the ward was pushed open and a large group of doctors walked in. Doctor, how is Rory? Rory's parents immediately ran forward to ask. Gary and Anya also went forward and looked at the doctors with anticipation. After the examination, the patient has completely woken up. Only part of the blood clot in the brain has not been cleared, so she needs to continue to be hospitalized for observation. Also, what else? We will definitely obey the doctor's orders. Rory's parents, Gary, and Anya step forward. Also, the patient has just woken up. She must not be agitated. The patient did not know that she is blind. Try to calm her down and accept this fact. The originally happy crowd became silent. They were immersed in the matter of Rory waking up, but they forgot that Rory had gone blind. Rory had great suffering. It wasn't easy for her to wake up and discover that she couldn't see anymore. Gary stood up. Doctor, I will help Rory accept reality as soon as possible. I hope you can continue to help her recover as soon as possible. We will do our best. The doctor nodded seriously at Gary. The patient is still in bed. You can go in. Okay. Gary nodded at the doctor and pushed open the door of the ward. Anya and Rory's parents also followed nervously. Rory looked at the sky above the ward with empty eyes. Her face was as pale as a sheet of paper. Her originally lively expression had now become extremely stiff. Her eyes were filled with confusion and helplessness. Hearing the door being pushed open, Rory first turned her head, then turned her eyes according to the direction of the sound. Gary, Mom, Dad, are you there? Rory opened her mouth, and her voice was hoarse and dry. Her lifeless eyes looked toward the corner of the ward. Yes, we are all here. Rory's mother held back her sobs and almost threw herself in front of Rory's sickbed. She held Rory's hand tightly. Her tears did not fall, but she did not dare to make a sound. Mom. Rory looked somewhere and smiled. She held her mother's hand and asked, It is not night, right? Is the electricity out? Why can't I see anything? Rory. Rory's mother closed her eyes, her face full of tears. That lively daughter of hers was young. How did she become like this? Mom, why are you crying? Rory tentatively stretched out her hand and wanted to touch her mother's face. Quickly, 
Get someone to fix the lamp. I can't see. Rory, the hospital has already sent people to fix it, but it will still take some time. Gary walked to the side of the bed and said gently and calmly. Rory's mother wiped her tears and put Rory's hand in Gary's hand. She stood up and walked to the side, holding back her tears. Rory's father hugged his wife and tried his best to hold on. Gary? Rory's voice instantly became a higher pitch. She held Gary's hand tightly and said, You can find me so quickly in such a dark place. Yes, Gary nodded. He remembered that Rory could not see him nodding. The hand that held Rory's unconsciously became tighter. When I was sleeping, I had a dream. Rory smiled. What kind of dream? Gary touched Rory's pale face and asked lovingly. I dreamt that my coworker Heather wanted to steal my favorite mango jerky. I also dreamt that Miss Anya was telling me that Sue was going to snatch you away. I was scared to death. I just thought that I can't sleep anymore. Otherwise, someone really might take you away. Rory grabbed Gary's hand tightly and asked, Would you ever leave me for someone else? No, Gary answered firmly. I will always be by your side. Oh, that's good. Rory smiled even more happily. She nodded her head forcefully and said to him, I remember my head hurting right before I fainted, but now that I am awake, it's still really hurting. How long was I asleep for? Not very long, Gary said gently. Besides, now that you are awake, you're going to be fine. Okay, Rory blinked and asked, Can you help me up? I want to sit up and rest. Yes, Gary nodded. He put his hands on her shoulders. When the others saw this, they started to walk over to help, but Gary raised his hand to stop them. They stayed where they were and continued to watch him as he helped her up. Rory was able to sit up with some difficulty, but she had just woken up. Her body was still very weak. Just a simple act of sitting up made her tired and out of breath. The sunlight was shining brightly through the gap between the window curtains and on to Rory's face. She had just sat up, and was startled. She slowly stretched out her hand and placed it on her face. She could feel the warmth of the sunlight on her skin, but it made her heart sink into a cold hell. She blinked her eyes and frantically grabbed Gary's hand and asked, Is it really nighttime? Gary swallowed hard, and then he smiled and said, Of course it's nighttime. It's very dark out. There are no moon or stars. Otherwise, I would carry you out of bed so you could look at the moon and stars outside the window. You're lying! Rory suddenly pushed his hand away. Her trembling fingers and empty eyes looked upwards, and she pointed her finger in the direction of the window. Just now, I felt that the sun was shining on my face. It is daytime, right? No, it is not. Rory's mother cried and ran to the window. She forcefully closed the curtains, and in an instant, the entire room fell into darkness. It's nighttime. Rory's mother threw herself in front of her bed and held her face. Rory, it's really nighttime right now. No, you are lying. You are lying to me. Rory kept shaking her head. My eyes. What happened to my eyes? Why can't I see anymore? Why? Rory. Gary pulled her into his arms. He kept kissing her forehead and tried comforting her. The doctor said that your eyes will get better, but it will take some time. Don't be afraid. No, no! She reached out her hands and touched her eyelids. She felt a rough and protruding scar on them. She instantly froze. Then she became extremely hysterical. My eyes! My eyes! Why did my eyes become like this? Why? Rory. Gary hugged her tightly, and his calm voice started to crack. I will be your eyes. It will be fine. Everything will be fine. Why? Why? Rory could not accept reality. My eyes. Why can't I see? 
Seeing her so heartbroken, Anya's eyes could not help but turn red as she tried holding back tears. Rory was in so much pain, and there was nothing she could do about it. Rory! Anya walked in front of her and said, Don't be discouraged. It's just like what Gary said. You still have a chance to see as long as you continue to be strong. Miss Anya? Rory was stunned for a moment and then began waving her hand in the air a few times. Rory, I'm here. I'm right here. Anya quickly held her hand and said in a comforting voice, I am here. Miss Anya, I can't see anymore. I can't see. See. The moment Rory held Anya's hands, she couldn't hold back any longer and started crying. Rory, don't cry. Gary hugged her and lowered his head to kiss the tears on her face. She couldn't stop, and tears were like broken beads that kept falling. I don't want to. I don't want. Rory still shook her head and was at a loss for what to do. There was no light or hope. What she faced now was only endless darkness. No, all of you, get out. She suddenly let go of Anya's hand. She tried her best to glare at them and shouted, All of you, get out! Get out! I don't want you to see me like this. Just leave. Anya, who she pushed away, staggered and almost fell to the ground. Luckily, Theo reacted quickly and caught her. Just then, the doctor who had been standing at the door of her room looked at Rory's parents and Anya and said, The patient cannot be upset. It is best to listen to her. She said you need to leave. You all must leave now. Anya looked at the doctor and finally nodded. She walked out of the room with Theo. Rory's parents looked at Rory with concern and sadly walked out as well. Gary was the only one left alone with Rory. Outside the room, everyone was still immersed in the joy of Rory waking up. Now, they were all incomparably sad. Rory's mother walked in front of the doctor and asked worriedly, Doctor, with Rory's current condition, what should we do? It was not easy for her to wake up just now. If she doesn't accept what has happened, then what can we do to help her? The doctor lowered his head and seemed to be in a difficult position. The most important thing right now is to provide psychological guidance to the patient so that she can slowly accept reality. We can't keep getting so excited. Rory was still struggling intensely in Gary's arms. She cried loudly, Let go of me! Let go of me! Rory, you just woke up. Your body hasn't fully recovered yet, and you can't move around like that. Be obedient and lie down, okay? He hugged her tightly, but he didn't know what else to do. No, I don't want to. I don't want to. She shook her head frantically. I don't want to be blind. I don't want to live in the darkness every day. The blue sky, white clouds, and many other things I used to see, and now I can't. I can't see anymore. Rory's lifeless eyes were filled with tears. She reached out her hand to touch Gary's face and said in a hoarse voice, And I will never see your face again. I won't be able to see your face again anymore. It's all right, Rory. It's all right. He held her hand and said, it's okay if you can't see me. I will always be by your side. Whatever you need, I am here for you. I will help you to feel things with your hands. No, I don't want to. I don't want to do this. I want my eyes to get better. Rory's heartbroken voice could be heard throughout the hallway outside her door. When everyone heard her crying, they could not help but lower their heads. Anya bit her lip and looked at the white hospital floor. A deep sadness surged in her heart. She felt so helpless watching her friend go through this and not being able to do anything about it. Rory was shouting and crying the entire afternoon while Anya stood outside of her door the whole time, worrying about her. Rory had become so upset that the doctor had no choice but to give her a sedative. Only then was she able to relax and fall asleep. Anya wasn't allowed to go back to Rory's room after she fell asleep, so all she could do was comfort her parents and leave. Theo escorted her out, and they returned to the villa. Anya thought about what happened to Rory today, 
and became very depressed. After returning to the villa, she was sullen and did not say anything. Theo noticed how quiet she was, so he walked to her side and sat down. Anya, don't be sad. Theo, you don't understand. She shook her head. Before you got here, I was kidnapped. I was whipped repeatedly and suffered a lot of wounds. But I was saved by a mysterious person. When my injuries were almost healed, I was able to return home safely. But Rory, she... Anya lowered her head and looked at the ground. But Rory was not that lucky. She accidentally discovered the truth about something and was hurt because of it. She is innocent. Should have never happened to her. She covered her face and started to sob. Anya. Theo reached out his hand to touch her shoulder and tried comforting her. It will be fine. Everything will be fine. Anya did not say anything and continued to look at the ground. Yes, everything will be fine. But when will Rory's sparkling eyes be fine? Until then, she is suffering and there is nothing I can do. Timothy, who had just walked into the main hall, saw Anya and calmly asked, What's wrong with you? He quickly walked over to her and squatted down. He reached out and held her face. Theo saw Timothy coming, but did not remove his hand from her shoulder. Timothy! Anya immediately threw herself into his arms. She could no longer hold back the tears and said, Rory, she... What happened to Rory? Speak slowly. He lightly patted her back. Then his strong arms grabbed her waist so she could easily stand up. Anya was like a koala bear, tightly hugging his body. Timothy did not even look at Theo, who was beside him, and he carried Anya into the bedroom. Theo watched him carry her into the bedroom as if there was no one else around. He looked at the closed door and could not help but clench his fists. This was the first time he felt that there was some things out of his control. Timothy walked into the bedroom and placed Anya on the bed. He reached out his hand and gently wiped away the tears on her face. What happened? Speak slowly. I will do my best to help you. Rory, she... Anya was trying hard not to cry. Rory, she woke up, but she could not see anything. She was so upset and sad today, but there was nothing we could do but watch her cry. We don't know how to help her. After she finished speaking, she laid on Timothy's shoulder and asked, Timothy, why? Rory is so innocent and such a good person. Why does she have to suffer like this? Anya, believe me, everyone will have good things happen to them, but will also suffer misfortune. Everything will be fine. He gently patted her back and comforted her. Since Rory is awake, it means that things are going in a good direction now. Theo had also said everything will be fine to her, but when Timothy said it, she felt a sense of relief. She nodded with tears on her face. All right, don't cry. Timothy touched her red nose. Actually, because of you and Gary, I asked Jason about Rory a few weeks ago. He said that there is still hope that she would be able to see again but the treatment process will be very long and painful. Really? Dr. Carter really said that Rory might be able to see again? Anya's eyes instantly lit up. Yes, he nodded. Since he is not an ophthalmologist, he specifically asked the hospital's ophthalmologist, and he said that Rory's condition is still hopeful. Thank you, Timothy. She hugged him, and her heavy heart instantly felt much better. <laughs> you can thank Jason and the ophthalmologist. Timothy laughed lightly. However, since you have thanked me, I will accept it. It's just that... He held her face and asked, How are you going to thank me? Just verbally? I... Anya smiled in embarrassment. Then I will make biscuits for you to eat, okay? Yesterday afternoon, you said you would make me biscuits with Theo but you never did. Yesterday, you exhausted me so much. 
Yesterday I was so tired I fell asleep and didn't even have dinner. How could I remember making biscuits for you? Then why don't we go and exercise together? He kissed her lips and had a charming smile on his face. I will try not to make you so tired this time. Timothy, can you not be like this? You just got off work. Have you finished reading all the company documents? Not really. He shrugged. He looked at her pink cheeks and said, Why don't you go to the study room and accompany me? Won't I disturb your work? No. He shook his head. You just stay by my side. I will read the documents, and you could read and draw or do whatever you want. All right. She clapped her hands. I haven't drawn in a long time. The feeling is almost gone. You go to the study. I'll go find paper and pen. Okay. He patted her head and watched her walk out of the bedroom. Anya walked into the main hall and saw Theo sitting on the sofa with a serious face. What happened? Why do you look so mad? Anya asked and walked over. Theo looked up at Anya and did not answer her question. He only asked, Why are you in a bad mood? I came to comfort you and now you're ignoring me. I... Anya frowned. She thought for a while, then patted Theo's shoulder and asked, Are you upset because of this? Yes. He nodded and grabbed the hand that was on his shoulder. Why can't I do what my brother can do? Anya heard what he said and immediately knew what he was thinking. She coughed lightly and pretended to be very mature. She advised him, When you are young, it is good to be competitive. But you don't want to be the competition. Theo, you are you. Your brother is your brother. We all have our own strengths and weaknesses. Why should we have to fight for it? What if I insist on fighting for it? He fixed his eyes on her bright peach blossom eyes and got lost. The hand that held Anya became even tighter. Don't be so insensible. Anya yelled back in a serious manner. How can you be so stubborn? Anya, in your eyes, am I just a child? His eyes darkened like thunderclouds that hang over our heads before the rain starts to pour. Anya unconsciously turned her head. She pulled back her hand and muttered, Theo, why are you looking at me like that? Anya, answer me. In your eyes, am I really just a child? He stood up and approached her step by step. She hurriedly took a step back. She realized that she had been talking about little Theo all day long and it hurt the pride of his manhood. So she smiled and explained, Actually, the more I spend time around you, the more I notice that you have grown up. You are not a child anymore. I will not say it in the future. No, that's it. Anya. Theo held Anya's shoulders with both hands. You know what I mean. I, I don't know what you mean. Why did you start yelling at me? His voice made her helpless. She took another step back and broke away from Theo's hands. Theo's hands missed when he tried to catch her wandering arm. The excited look on his face gradually froze and finally returned to normal. He looked at her blank face and said softly, Sorry, Anya. I just got too excited. It's okay. Anya grabbed her hair to distract herself from his strange actions. She thought carefully and asked, Theo, you are not in a stable mood. Is it because of Jen? I... Theo opened his mouth and smiled bitterly. Finally, he nodded. Yes, it is because of her. Oh, don't be discouraged. Besides, I am on your side and can still help you. The second Anya knew the real reason she was able to relax. Theo, look at you. You are handsome and young. The last time I met with Jen, I felt that she also had a good impression of you. As long as you show some effort, you will definitely be able to get her. Theo forced the corner of his mouth to raise and nodded. Yes, I know. All right, well, I have to go. Don't get upset. It will all work out. She smiled brightly at him with reassuring eyes. He looked at her smile and nodded. Okay, 
Go. She saw that Theo was in a much better mood, so she fell at ease and went to get her items. Theo looked at her back and turned to walk back to his room. With Anya by his side, he realized he could not control his emotions like before. He had to stay calm and could not get out of hand as he had just now. The next day, Anya woke up with some anxiety about her friends and decided to go straight to the hospital to see her. Timothy and Anton still went to work and school as usual. Theo was the only one who had nothing to do. So, he decided that he wanted to accompany Anya to the hospital. Anya kindly agreed, but before going to the hospital, she gave a call to Rory's parents. She asked how Rory was doing and if it was inconvenient for them to arrive. The phone rang for a long time before it was picked. She asked how Rory was doing and if it was inconvenient for them to arrive. The phone rang for a long time before it was picked up. Hi, how is Rory doing? I want to go and see if I can come by and see her today. Anya, Rory is very emotional right now. She is hiding in a room alone and has not been seen by anyone besides the nurses and doctors. She has been crying this whole time. The doctor said that the injury on her eyes is not healed yet and that she cannot cry too much. So she was given a sedative and is now asleep again. Rory's mother's voice became as bitter as before. Anya bit her lips and could only say, That is good. When Rory is better, I will come and see her. You all need to pay more attention to your health and don't tire yourself out. Rory's mother said a few words and hung up the phone. Anya plopped down on the couch and sighed in disappointment. She did not know what to do. Anya, why are you on the sofa? Are you not going to the hospital? Leo had just changed his clothes, walked out of the door, and saw Anya looking lifeless. I am not going. Anya nodded and sighed. Now Rory is not seeing anyone. The situation is very bad. So that's the case. Theo nodded and sat down beside her saying, Your friend's situation is indeed very sad. Yes, she said and sighed again. Okay, you are not a doctor. You will not only not be able to save your friend with such a sad face, but acting like this can ruin your body and mental state. He reached out his hand and slid Anya's hair to the side as he massaged her temples. Anya immediately tilted her head to the side and said, Theo, please stop. It feels weird. Oh, he smiled and took back his hand. I'm used to seeing you as a practice partner. That's why I couldn't help but do that just now. You got used to it in just one day? She turned her head and looked at him and cocked her eyebrow. Yes, he nodded very seriously. Oh, right, Anya. Talking about practice partners, do you want to continue helping me? I'm not in the mood. She shook her head and lay down on the sofa. So do you plan to die on the sofa for the rest of the day? Seeing her like this was hard for him. He felt that he should do something to make her happy. Yes, it's good to lie here. I can be sad, but also think about the good things in my life. She said as she lazily nodded her head. Why don't I make something for you to eat? Tell me what you want. He was going to try his best to make her happy. I'm not hungry, she replied as she shook her head. But Anya, you... Theo wanted to say something to persuade her, but his phone began to ring. He took out the phone, and when he saw the caller ID, Theo's sharp eyebrows immediately wrinkled. He thought for a moment and said to her, Are you okay if I leave you here to take this call? Go. She did not care and just casually replied. Theo took a deep look at Anya, picked up his phone, and walked to his room. He then locked the door. He pressed the phone and answered. His voice immediately became cold. Jen, I thought we agreed you were not going to contact me. Theo, Heath came to find us. Jen, who was on the phone, did not care about Theo's dissatisfied tone. She had to get the news out. Theo immediately grabbed the phone in his hand. He looked in the direction of the door and then whispered to Jen on the other side of the phone. Where is he now? 
Because of the ashes, he went to find Leonard. But Leonard thought it was better for you to see him. So he told me to contact you. Jen's tone was full of expectation, but quickly became doubtful. Theo, are you coming over? Theo thought for a while and nodded. Send me your location. I will come to find you immediately. Okay, I will wait for you. She said with a chipper tone. Theo made an affirmative sound and hung up. He pushed open the door and walked out of the room. He saw that Anya was still lying on the sofa depressed. He walked over and squatted in front of her. Anya, I need to go out for a while. You need to stay in the villa and wait for me to come back. Yes, go. Anya nodded. Why don't you ask me what I am going out for? Theo looked at Anya's eyelids and smiled. I'm not that gossipy. Anya turned around. Now go take care of your business. Theo shook his head. He got up and squeezed a glass of orange juice for Anya and placed it on the table. Anya, there is some juice on the table. You have to drink it since you did not eat breakfast. I am leaving now. Thank you. Bye-bye. She waved to Theo and watched him walk out of the main hall. Then she continued to lean on the sofa. Theo left the villa and drove downtown until he reached Jen's apartment complex. He got out of the car and headed for her apartment. Just as he reached the door, the door of the apartment was immediately opened. Standing at the door was Jen with a huge smile on her face. She was wearing a short sundress and it was paired with a fragrant scent on her waist and her entire body emitted a warm and sweet aura. Theo frowned and asked, why did you open the door before I knocked? What if it hadn't been me approaching the door? Theo, are you concerned about me? Jen looked at him and covered her heart, pretending to be touched. No, Theo shook his head. I think if you're not vigilant, you might as well go back home and be done with the mission. I don't want anything to go wrong with my plan because of anyone. Oh, I see. Jen lowered her head in disappointment she looked at her toes and explained, It's not that I'm not alert. It's just that you said you were coming over on the phone. After hanging up the phone, I did a few things and then waited for you. I kept staring at the display screen at the entrance. I only opened the door when I saw you coming. Theo listened to her explanation and refrained from rolling his eyes. He cleared his throat and said, Okay, let's go. Okay, she replied. Her voice was still muffled. She nodded and turned to the side to make way for Theo. After he entered, she gently closed the door. Heath was on her couch and had been sitting there for a long time. He was anxious and reached out to pick up the water that the maid had brought over and placed it by his lips. He hesitated for a second and sat back into his original position vigilantly. After all, this was the first time he had met these people so it was important for him to be careful. During this period of time, he avoided pursuing the police. When the wind was no longer so harsh, he took the risk and went to find Leonard. It had been some time since he had seen the news of Melissa's death on the news. He knew he would be the one to handle the funeral, and so he needed to find and destroy whoever had her ashes. Actually, when he first heard that Melissa's ashes were in Leonard's hands, Heath was very surprised because this guy and Melissa had almost no interaction. It was a little suspicious that he was now involved in the mess of it all. However, after seeing Leonard, Heath seemed to understand what he was thinking. He was the previous manager of the Godot's group marketing department. If Leonard wanted to sell the company, he must have wanted to rely on Melissa's ashes to get in touch with Heath. However, he felt that with Leonard's power, he could not shake the thought of his position in the company. If he could get Melissa's ashes and take revenge on Timothy, then Leonard would be able to get everything he wanted. With all of this in mind, Heath listened to Leonard's arrangement and found Jen. Heath knew Jen before because he occasionally heard Melissa complain about the company and heard her mention the name. He did not expect that Leonard's power had already infiltrated to this extent. This made him another hope for avenging Melissa. Just as Heath was lost in his thoughts, the door of the inner hall was opened. 
Heath looked up and saw a young man in formal clothing walking towards him. He noticed that this man was very tall, probably taller than him. He was tall and thin, with sword-like eyebrows and starry eyes. His face was angular, but his facial features... Heath took a closer look and found that this young man was somewhat similar to Timothy. Hello, Mr. Zellweger. I am Theo. He walked in front of Heath and extended his hand to him. Theo. Heath repeated this name in his mind. The more he thought about it, the more familiar it felt. That's right. Timothy had a brother who shared the same father and a different mother, and his name was Theo. Heath did not know whether Theo was a friend or foe, but he still stood up calmly and held his hand. Hello. Theo nodded at him, and the two of them sat down. I assume you know who I am. Theo picked up the water in front of him and took a sip. Heath looked at him and smiled. He did not comment on what Theo said. I remember something about you, but I'm not sure what to say. It's exactly what you thought. He did not hide anything. I am the president of the Godot Group, Timothy's younger brother. I am the younger brother of the same father and a different mother. Heath did not expect him to be so straightforward. He looked at Theo seriously. He felt that although he was young, he could not be underestimated. He was not sure whether Theo was his assistant or master of Leonard. With Theo's identity, it would be odd for him to be Leonard's assistant but maybe Leonard didn't know who he was. Would Theo be able to order Leonard to do everything that was happening right now at such a young age? If that was the case, he was also the one who sent Jen to infiltrate the Sunderby Styles and Godot Group project team ahead of time. That would be too scary. It's not possible, Heath thought to himself. Heath moved his lips and asked doubtfully, I don't know much about you but the relationship between you and Leonard. I am friends with Leonard. I work with him to do some things that benefit others and myself, he said as he smiled at Heath in a friendly manner. I see. Heath nodded and understood what he meant. That was true. Leonard and Theo were both trying to infiltrate the Godot group. One of them had power, and the other one had a proper identity. Naturally, they would get together, and it would all work out. However, he had some doubts. Even if Theo was added, they might not be able to take the company for themselves. I know what you're thinking. Theo looked at him. Is it because you don't think highly of the company that Leonard and I are working together? This. <sighs> he saw Theo was really smart. He was able to see through people's thoughts with a single glance. Don't worry. I originally had some plans with Leonard, but now I have found you as a friend. Theo said confidently, With your help, we will be able to achieve twice the result with half the effort. Besides, I think you should be very willing to cooperate with us. His sharp words came to a point. Heath understood what Theo meant. Besides, only the two of them could rely on him. Thinking about this, Heath nodded to Theo. Thank you for your help, and Mr. Leonard. Of course, I am willing to cooperate with you. Okay, Theo nodded with satisfaction. He crossed his legs and said, Since we are friends now, I must give you a gift first. Oh? Heath raised his head and looked at him with anticipation and vigilance. Leonard has told me about the matter between you and Melissa. In order to let you know where the real enemy is, I know everything in full detail. So, I sent people to investigate the specific process of Melissa's death. I found that she did not commit suicide by jumping off the building, as the news said. There is another factor. Jen, who had been standing obediently beside Theo, heard this. Her pretty eyebrows immediately raised. She liked to see Theo play with people in the palm of his hand. He was extra cute when he was domineering. Once Heath heard Melissa's name, he immediately lost the ability to think. He did not notice Jen's expression at all, and also ignored the trace of ridicule hidden in Theo's tone. He closed his eyes painfully and took a few deep breaths. He looked at Theo and said, Melissa is the love of my life. I did not protect her well. 
even before she died. I didn't even get to see her one last time before she left us. The news of her death, I saw it on the TV. This is something that I will never be able to let go of for the rest of my life. Mr. Godot, please tell me how Melissa died. I will definitely avenge her. I will tell you everything I know. Thea pretended to look at him with sympathy and said, Please forgive me for the harsh truth I am about to reveal. Please say it. I can handle it. As he said that, the veins on his clenched fists had already popped out. Melissa was bailed out by Timothy from the prison. She was called to the roof of the building and was pushed off. Once Theo finished speaking, he looked at Heath, who was getting more and more upset. Melissa's body changed shape after being thrown down, and her face was ruined. Even until death, she did not close her eyes. Melissa. Heath closed his eyes again. The surging pain in his chest made his whole body tremble. He could not imagine how scared and terrified Melissa was when she fell down the building. He was not by her side, and she was so desperate and helpless. Please forgive me. Jen quickly stepped forward and comforted Heath. As your friend, we are also very sad about what happened to Melissa. But please remember, Theo and I both are here to help you. So I hope you can let go of the grudge and think about it. Only then can you take revenge for Melissa. Hearing her comforting words, Heath slowly opened his eyes. He looked at Jen with bloodshot eyes and said, I will cooperate with you. As long as I can kill Timothy and Anya... I will do anything you want me to do. When Jen heard that Heath was also going to kill Anya, her heart suddenly jumped. Theo spoke up. Heath, the most important thing right now is to overthrow Timothy. As for the other things, we can discuss them later. Okay, so how are we going to overthrow Timothy? He looked at Theo with resentment and helplessness. Timothy is now the chairman of the Godot Group. Nod to his power in Harburton, not to mention the entire country. You can't just do as you wish to someone like him. Heath, please rest assured about this. Theo smiled patiently. I am Timothy's younger brother, and we have the same father who started the company. I have a portion of the shares in the company, together with mine, and when we take Timothy out, we will have the whole company to ourselves. Hearing what Theo said, he seemed to have suddenly remembered something. I remember that when Melissa and Timothy got married, Timothy transferred some shares under his name to Melissa's name as a dowry, so to say. He sighed. If you could get the shares out of Melissa's name, you may have a chance of winning. Oh? Theo pretended to be interested. Do you think I still have a chance to get the shares? I don't think so. Heath shook his head regretfully. Melissa met Timothy before she died. I think he's already moved that share to his name. Is that so? Heath pretended to feel sorry for her and said, then our future path will be much more difficult. But, speaking up to this point, Theo raised his voice. I believe that with your help, we will definitely accomplish this task. I hope so. Heath took a deep breath, then looked over with determination. Since we already have a goal, let's not delay any longer. Let me tell you what I know about the company. Theo praised Heath's pragmatism. If it wasn't because he had hurt Anya, Theo would have kept him by his side and put him in an important position. However, he didn't have that chance now. All right, Heath, what do you know? Theo nodded and looked at him seriously. Just like that, the two of them chatted in Jen's apartment from morning till afternoon. When the sun was about to set, they finally ended the conversation. Thank you, Heath. The internal secrets of the company that you provided are really helpful to us. After listening to all of the information, Theo stood up. He looked at Heath with a smile and said, But when we come up with a plan to implement it, we will need your help. I will do my best to help you. Heath nodded firmly. Of course, this is also to help me. I am relieved by your words. He smiled with satisfaction and said politely, Let's get down to business. You have been busy all day. I have already sent someone to arrange an apartment for you next to Jen's apartment. 
It's very safe and hidden. If you don't mind, you can rest there until the next step of the plan commences. If there's anything you need, you can contact Jen directly. Right now, the police are still looking for you everywhere, so you can't go out. Heath did not expect him to be so considerate, so he nodded gratefully. Thank you. I will do as you say. You're welcome, Theo smiled. You should rest. If there is anything, I will come to you. After that, he turned around and left. At this time, Heath immediately called out to Theo. Mr. Godot, I have one more thing to say. Theo immediately turned around and said to Heath, What do you have to say? Mr. Godot, I came to find you and Leonard for the purpose of getting Melissa's ashes back. Now we are working together, so... He looked at Theo with a serious expression, knowing he had gotten his point across. Oh, so that is what this is about. He looked like he had suddenly realized something. However, he was not in a hurry to speak. It was as if he had already had the plan to outsmart Heath. Mr. Godot, if you have something to say, just say it. Heath could tell that he would not return the ashes to him that easily, but he was willing to do whatever it took. If you could not tell, I am a young man, and sometimes I am not very thoughtful when it comes to things like this. So, please forgive me if this comes off a little bit rude. Theo paused for a moment. He said solemnly, Look, after all, it is also a big matter for me to obtain the Godot group. I know the importance of Melissa's ashes to you, so I would like to propose something. Theo's tone became firm and unquestionable. I can get a hold of Melissa's ashes, but I will hold on to them for you, temporarily. After the matter is done, we will definitely return them to you in good condition. Heath's eyes flashed. His heart instantly fell into dust. He felt bitter and sad. This was useless. He had been so cooperative and gave him inside information just for everything to fall through. Could he even trust Theo? However, after thinking about it carefully, Theo's words were not unreasonable. He had thought it through and had to do what would benefit him the most. Besides, given his current situation, there was no other way to go except to agree to Theo's proposal. All right, that's fine. Heath finally nodded his head. However, can I see that you have the ashes first? Theo looked at his deep expression of love and thought for a while. Okay, I will let Jen take you to look later. Thank you, he responded gratefully. You're welcome. Theo shook his head and walked forward with his hands in his pockets. In fact, Heath was quite admirable. However, he loved the wrong person. In that case, there would be no good ending for him in life. Theo sighed as he pushed open the door of the apartment and walked out. Jen noticed and ran to catch up with him. Theo, don't go yet. Is there anything else we need to cover? He stood looking puzzled. Jen quickly ran to him and lowered her head. She said shyly, Look, the sun is setting. Do you want to stay for dinner with me? No, I am okay. Theo did not even think about it and refused immediately. I need to go back to the villa. You watch Heath carefully. Is it because of Anya? Jen could not help but blurt out. Her voice was a little shaky. Is it because of Anya that you are rushing back? Theo's eyes moved and then he looked at her expressionlessly. I do not need to explain what I do to you. I... Jen suddenly froze on the spot. Theo's cold words made her feel that her head and feet were heavy. Anya, Anya, it was always about Anya. What exactly was so good about her? She dug her nails into her palm and tried hard to take a few deep breaths before she forced a smile. God, Theo, I did not mean that. I just meant... She was quickly interrupted. Jen. He did not give her a chance to explain. He just interrupted her and said, I don't want to understand what you mean, but you have to remember what you promised me before you came here. Jen bit her lips and smiled bitterly. Yes, I know. We are cooperating as professionals and friends. Other than that, there will not be any other relationship. If you violate it, you can go back home. 
It's good that you know. Theo looked at her, nodded, and turned around and continued to walk forward. Jen immediately took a step forward, and in the next second, she squatted on the spot again. She looked at Theo's back, and her originally pitiful eyes became gradually cold. When Theo did not live with Anya, he would always smile when he saw Jen. Day by day, the smile was fading, and soon she feared he would forget her. She was scheming to get Anya out of his life forever. Then she would be his prized possession. She gritted her teeth, took a step back, and forcefully closed the door. Keith, who had been waiting in the room, hurriedly took a step forward and looked at Jen. Miss, when are you free? He said you would bring me to see Melissa's ashes? Jen, whose back was facing Heath, still had a ferocious look on her face. She took a few deep breaths, but revealing a smile and turned around. Okay, please follow me, Jen said as she pressed the password to the door. She opened the door and Heath nodded and followed her. Melissa's ashes were placed in a separate place at the funeral home in Harburton. There were special guards there. Once Jen brought Heath to the room, she immediately showed him the urn and left. That ghostly place was filled with bad energy. No one wanted to stay there for long. As for Heath, the moment he walked into that room, his entire body seemed to have been drained of energy. His footsteps became unsteady, and he took a deep breath. The urn was placed on a table, and beside it were a few plates of fruit and two incense burners. With a plop, Heath knelt in front of the urn, he slowly lowered his head, and his tightly shut eyes began to flow a river of tears. Melissa. Although Heath already knew the truth, when he saw the urn, he still felt a heartache. She was beautiful and moving. Her voice, smile, and appearance were clearly imprinted in his mind. Now she had turned into a pile of lifeless ashes. He reached out his hand to cover his aching chest, and slowly opened his eyes. Melissa, wait for me. After I take revenge for you, I will come to join you. No matter whether I live or die, I will always be by your side. Always. The sun gradually set, and the afterglow of the evening sprinkled the entire city of Harburton. The evening wind of the early summer blew against the green leaves, making a rustling sound. When Theo returned to the villa, he saw Anya was back, facing him and looking at the drawer. He didn't know what she was looking for. He smiled and walked towards Anya with light steps. He reached out his hand to cover Anya's eyes and spoke with a coarse tone. Don't move. This villa is surrounded by my people. Unexpectedly, Anya did not react at all. She only sighed and said, Theo, don't act like a child all day. Why are you this way? You are already so old that you still play this kind of game. How did you guess it was me? He asked as he bitterly withdrew his hand. If it wasn't you coming up on me, it would be my next captor. Anya put her hands on her waist and turned around. I could sense which of the two it was. Oh, so Anya, your senses are the best part of you now? Theo sat down comfortably and looked at her. He said with a smile, Unfortunately, my head is not that bright. You are ages ahead of me, figuratively and literally. He said with a sassy tone and began to laugh when Anya let out a scoff and slapped his arm. Anya was looking at the drawer. I am going to be busy. You can play by yourself. Anya snorted. What are you going to do? Theo looked at Anya curiously. Although your injuries have completely healed, it's best to rest for a period. Only then can your body completely recover. How did you know I was injured? Anya looked at Theo curiously. Theo paused for a moment. You told me when you went to see Rory. Did you forget? Oh, I think so. Anya nodded. I have long said that your brain is not working properly. Theo smiled and heaved a sigh of relief. He said this because he had saved Anya earlier. Luckily, she had told him about it yesterday. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to explain it clearly. Theo touched his chin. 
He would never make such a mistake in the past. He was too relaxed with Anya. Did you bring the paper over? No one knew when, but Timothy walked out of the bedroom and leaned against the wall. He did not know how long they had been talking. When Theo saw Timothy, his expression unconsciously became restrained. Timothy! Anya ran in front of him, explaining, I used the paper and brush with you yesterday, but I did not find them just now. I remember you put them in the storage room. Why are you looking for them here? Anya heard Timothy's words and suddenly patted her head. No wonder I can't find them. Anya hurriedly ran to the storage room. Timothy watched Anya run away. He only smiled slightly and did not follow her. He looked at Theo as if he had something to say. Theo saw Timothy's gaze and frowned. Brother, you look at me like that. Do you have something to say? Timothy nodded. I heard from the bodyguards in the villa that you went out today. Yes, I went out to play. Theo put his hands behind his head and said, It's too boring to stay alone in the mansion. Since it's boring, let's find something to do. Timothy walked to the sofa opposite Theo and sat down. Find something to do? Theo shook his head. I don't want to do anything. We'll just stay in the villa and accompany Anya. I haven't said what I want you to do. Don't reject me so quickly. Timothy looked at Theo's face and carefully looked at his expression. Why don't you go to my company to help? After all, your mother and your own shares are still in the company. It's perfectly justifiable for you to work there. Our shares are nothing, Theo waved his hand. Besides, I don't just want to stay in the company all day after graduating. That's why I escaped and came to Harburton. You can't make me go back to work. I'm very satisfied to be able to accompany Anya in the villa. I don't want you to constantly annoy Anya in the villa. That's why I want you to work in the company. How can I be annoying? Anya and I are friends. I don't want to talk about your relationship with Anya because she will have nothing to do with you in the end. Timothy looked at Theo. You have to remember this. Timothy's voice was very soft, but there was an invisible pressure. No matter how hard Theo tried to hide it, his face still darkened for a second. He looked directly into Timothy's eyes. Oh, brother, you are so confident. Have you never lost before? No, I haven't. Timothy nodded with certainty. Theo laughed and waved his hand. Yes, you have never lost. It is because you have never lost that I don't want to go to the Godot group. If I go there, wouldn't it be even more embarrassing if I don't have the ability to do business? You will be the CEO and I will be unemployed. I don't want you to stay in the villa with Anya. Theo, do you remember what you said to me four years ago when you left? Theo looked confused. What did I say? It has been too long. I probably forgot. Timothy raised his eyebrows and smiled. You have to do as I say. No way. Theo was in a difficult position. Do I have to work in Godot Group? Work in Godot Group or go back to America? I will give you a few days to think about it. Timothy's tone was unquestionable. Think about it? Think about what? Anya, who had returned, vaguely heard Timothy's words. Anya, persuade my brother. He actually wants me to work in the company. If that's the case, I can't stay in the villa to accompany you. I never asked you to accompany me. Timothy made the right decision. You are not young anymore. It's time to go out and work. When Timothy was your age, he already occupied a very high position in the Godot group. Oh my God, even you are not going to help me. Theo wailed and sat back on the sofa. <laughs> this is good for you. Anya held the paper and the brush. She walked to Theo and patted his shoulder. When you come to the Godot group, you must work hard. All right, Anya. Timothy looked at Anya's hand on Theo's shoulder. Since you have found the paper and brush, go to the study and wait for me. I will find you in a minute. Oh, okay. Anya nodded. She felt that Timothy's voice suddenly became cold. 
she walked to the study with a painting paper and brush. Timothy moved his body to block Theo's view of Anya's back. Theo was stunned for a moment, then withdrew his gaze. Brother, do you have anything else? No. Timothy gave Theo a meaningful look. Oh. Theo nodded, and Timothy turned around and looked away with a smile that was not a smile. Timothy went to the study and saw Anya holding a brush and playing with flowers out of boredom. Anya saw Timothy coming and quickly stood up and walked over. She did not expect Timothy to pull her into his embrace. Before Anya could say anything, Timothy's lips came close. She felt Timothy's arm tighten around her waist. Anya immediately felt the chill on her body. She was frightened and quickly looked around. She found that Timothy had taken off her coat. Oh, Anya used all of her strength to hold Timothy's face and moved his lips away a little. Timothy, what are you doing? You are not allowed to touch other men with your hands in the future. When have I touched other men? Anya was about to argue when she suddenly remembered that she had patted Theo on the shoulder. Why was Timothy so petty? Anya looked at him in disbelief. Timothy? Anya put her hand on Timothy's chest. Are you sure you want to do this? This is the study. Why not? Timothy looked at Anya's flushed cheeks and continued kissing. The next day, the weather was perfect. The temperature was getting higher and higher. The clothes on people were getting thinner and thinner. The wind in the early summer blew gently and passed through the vines in front of the villa. When Theo woke up in the morning, he found that Timothy, Anton, and Anya had already woken up. Theo was a little surprised because Timothy had usually gone to work at this time of the day. Anton was eating breakfast and Anya was still sleeping. However, the three of them were all gathered together and eating with relish. This was the first time Theo had seen it since he lived in the villa. Theo, you're awake. Anya smiled at Theo and greeted him. But when she remembered Timothy's warning to her last night, she immediately hid her smile. Yes, Theo nodded to Anya and sat across from her. Good morning, Uncle Theo. Good morning, Anton. Theo looked at Anton and liked him very much. Even if he was Timothy's son, he still had half of Anya's blood in him. If he was with Anya in the future, he would gladly accept Anton. The maid in the villa brought breakfast to Theo. Theo thanked her, but his eyes couldn't help looking at the three of them in front of him. Timothy, Anya, and Anton. The scene of them being together was very harmonious. He could feel the joy within. He was like an outsider. Just when Theo's throat was somewhat bitter, Anton finished eating and set up the tableware. Mom, I have finished eating. I'm going to pack my bag. Be good, Anton. Go. Anya patted Anton's head and watched him run into his room. Anya turned her head and continued to eat the food. As she ate, she said to Timothy, who was eating elegantly, Timothy, hurry up and eat. We will be late. Yes, Timothy nodded. But you seem to eat slower than me. Anya was stunned. She looked at the food in her bowl and then looked at the food in Timothy's bowl. She seemed to have more food left. So she smiled. Are you guys going out together? Theo put down the fork he had just picked up. Yes, Timothy spoke before Anya. We have a parent-teacher meeting with Anton. Theo's face darkened, and he looked at Anya again. Anya nodded, affirming Timothy's words. Theo nodded. He thought for a while, and suddenly his eyes lit up. Anya, my brother is the CEO of Godot Group. Business dealings are worth tens of millions every minute. It might take a long time to hold a parent-teacher conference. It will affect my brother's business. Why don't you let my brother go back to work? I will attend the parent meeting for Anton on behalf of my brother. Theo looked at Anya with anticipation. Anya looked at Timothy hesitantly. She did not want Theo to go with her. He looked too young. He did not look like Anton's father at all. Besides, Timothy was Anton's real father. Timothy swallowed the last mouthful of food unhurriedly. He elegantly wiped his lips with a napkin and slowly approached Anya's ear. 
His voice was soft and mellow. So, you should know. For you, I have missed out on a lot of business. At night, you have to repay the debt with your body. Timothy! Anya's face turned red. She was talking about the parent-teacher meeting with Anton. How could he say that in front of Theo? Go and change your clothes. We are leaving soon. What Theo said just now? I won't consider it. Timothy's tone was indifferent. He didn't take Theo's words seriously at all. Okay. Anya nodded when she heard Timothy's answer. She put down the fork and went into the closet. Theo knew that his suggestion would not be approved by Timothy, but his attitude was too casual. He picked up his fork bitterly and started to eat. How's the consideration of entering the Godot group coming along? Timothy raised his head and looked at Theo. Theo, who had just picked up his breakfast, immediately stopped. He had an expression that said, I can't even eat peacefully. Brother, you cannot force me to do things I don't want to do. I really don't want to go to the company. All right, then. Timothy nodded and snapped his fingers. The bodyguard guarding the villa immediately walked in. What can I do for you? Book a flight ticket to America for Theo. The fastest one. Wait a minute. Theo stood up. Okay, okay, okay. I'll go. But don't forget to give me a leisurely position. I have my own arrangements. Timothy waved his hand, indicating that the bodyguard could leave. Theo sighed and picked up his fork again. Timothy, do you think my dress looks good? Anya walked out of the closet in a gray skirt. The skirt just covered Anya's knees. It was thin and layered, and it was perfectly fitted. It made Anya look elegant. Theo could not help but put down his fork. He looked at Anya and sighed. Anya, you should always wear skirts. Really? Anya laughed happily and looked at her skirt. It's not good. Go back and change. Timothy stood up and walked in front of Anya. Why? Theo said it was good. I think it's good too. Anya looked up at Timothy and was a little unhappy. Theo, who had not had a bite of breakfast yet, followed Anya's words and said, Brother, did you say it was not pretty because I said it was pretty? You can even tell it's good looking. This means that you can work in the Godot group. Timothy did not even turn his head. After he finished speaking, he pulled Anya and walked into the closet. Theo turned his head disappointedly and looked at the breakfast in front of him. He did not have an appetite at all. Anya was pulled into the closet. She lowered her head and was still unhappy. Timothy laughed lightly and allowed Anya to be unhappy. He slowly reached out his hand and unzipped the zipper on the back of the skirt. What are you doing? Anya quickly grabbed Timothy's hand. A third of her back was exposed. Under the gentle light, it was glowing. Helping you change your clothes. Timothy's eyes could not help but become heated. His fingers, which were clearly defined, slid down the middle of her back. Anya instantly felt an electric current flowing through her body. She could not help but press down on her lips. The hand that was tightly holding Timothy also became a little looser. Timothy kissed Anya's lips, and his voice became a little hoarse. Fox. Wait a minute. Anya's chest rose and fell, and she pushed Timothy away with her hand. We promised Anton that we would go to the parent-teacher conference earlier this time, so it's not good to do these things now. Timothy coughed lightly with regret. He let go. All right, then. We will talk about this at night. Anya nodded with a blush on her face. I will help you pick your clothes. Timothy turned around and looked at the dazzling array of clothes. Anya paused for a moment and quickly picked up the shirt that had fallen on the ground. She covered her chest and followed behind Timothy, watching him personally pick her clothes. Finally, Anya wore a white shirt with a lotus leaf collar and a long blue skirt. She tied her hair behind her head and it was simple and neat. Her entire outfit showed her intellectual beauty. Although it was also very beautiful, it was much more conservative than the gray dress. At this time, 
Anton, who had already tidied up his school bag, ran out. He wore a child's clothing and happily ran in front of Anya. He said, Are we leaving? Yes. Anya nodded. We are leaving now. Timothy had changed into a silver-gray casual suit. He came in front of Anton and Anya. The driver is ready outside. Let's go. Okay. Anton nodded. With one hand holding Anya and the other hand holding Timothy, they walked out of the main hall of the villa. The three of them had just left when Theo, who had been staying in his room, walked out. The back of the happy three hurt Theo's eyes deeply. He picked up the phone in his hand and said to the person on the other side of the phone, Now Timothy has forced me to work in his company. You have to make arrangements for other things. After getting a positive answer from the person on the phone, Theo hung up, turned around, and walked back to his room. This kind of life would not be long. He would one day get Anya. On the way to kindergarten, Anton was lying on Timothy's lap happily. Along the way, he kept chattering. Timothy patiently listened to Anton's words and responded to him from time to time. Anya saw this harmonious scene and was also happy in her heart. If life could be so peaceful and happy, she would be very satisfied. However, this harmonious atmosphere was quickly interrupted by a hurried ringtone. Anton obediently sat up from Timothy's lap and into Anya's arms. His small face became a little worried. He was afraid that his first parent-teacher conference with a father would be gone just like that. Anya also looked at Timothy uneasily. She saw Timothy press the answer button and his face gradually became serious. The person who called was Rick Z. Timothy, a very important person came to the company. He wants to see you immediately. Who? Timothy frowned. For Rick Z to be serious, he must be an important person. It's your old man, Mr. Gerald Godot. Rick Z explained. He planned to go from the United States to Serene City to recuperate. He stopped by Harburton and came to tell you something very important. Timothy paused for a moment and nodded. Okay, I will be right there. Although they did not know what was said on the phone, when they heard Timothy say, I'll be right back, Anton and Anya's expressions changed. Timothy, who hung up the phone, looked at Anya and Anton and said, Anton, Anya, I need to go back to the company. But you promised me. Okay, go. I see that something big must have happened. Anya nodded to Timothy. She could still tell what was important and what was unimportant. Mom! Anton lowered his head in disappointment. I just don't want to go to school with you. I need to go to the company to do something urgently. I will go back to school to look for you after I finish what I need to. Timothy patted Anton's head and promised him. Anton, I said I want to go to the parent-teacher conference, so... I will definitely be there. Really? Anton's eyes immediately lit up. Really? Timothy nodded. Pinky promise. Anton stretched out his finger. <laughs>